Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video, we're looking at using the Hornby TTS sound decoder with a CD motor upgrade kit. This is a tender driven analog model with a ring filled motor and I want a digital sound fitted model with a CD motor. Normally that would be quite straightforward upgrade and most decoders will work well with the CD motor upgrade kit. However, because the Hornby TTS sound decoders and Hornby's basic decoder for that matter don't have any speed control built in, they don't have CV5 and they don't have a speed table, that can make getting the decoder and motor to work well together and achieve sensible speeds really quite difficult. So just in case anyone else is having any issues with this, I thought I'd share what I've done. It's not perfect, but it's definitely an improvement. If you're aware of a better way of doing this, then please let me know in the comments below, but this is what I did. So this is the tender that I'm converting to digital sound with a CD motor and it belongs to this locomotive, Robert the Devil, a Class A3 which was actually a Christmas present from my mum, so thanks mum. The model isn't really that old, early 2000s I think, but it still had an analogue ring fill motor which I wanted to change. As you can see I've already installed the CD CAN motor. This was a kit from Strathpepper Junction, I've put the link in the description below. I didn't film the installation because Strathpepper have already done an excellent instructional video so go check that out if you want to see how it's done properly. I tested the motor using DC and it all ran smoothly so I moved on to installing the decoder which I hardwired in. Hardwiring just means directly soldered to the motor and the pickups rather than using a socket and I've done that here because we've got limited space. I'm using a Hornby TTS sound decoder, this costs just over £30 which is good value for a sound decoder. I'll try to put a link to one in the description. I've also upgraded the speaker and if you saw my video on testing small speakers then you might recognise this one. If you trim the small end bracket off it fits really neatly against the motor mount and I've just held that in place with some black tack. I've also stuck a couple of pieces of small plastic down here in the centre to raise this section up to make sure that when I put the decoder in it's not going to foul the rear set of wheels on the tender. These stick up slightly above the tender frame. It's actually really satisfying that the space between the speaker and the tender screw points is the perfect size for the decoder. After installing the decoder I tested it on digital and as expected the motor ran far too fast. That's because this is a 6 volt motor receiving considerably more than 6 volts from the decoder. Normally I would just adjust the speed settings on the decoder, however these TTS sound decoders are pretty basic and they don't have speed settings. So seeing as I couldn't reduce the speed using the decoder I looked at adjusting the gearing. The original pinion gear in the centre on the ring field had 11 teeth and the Strathpepper kit includes a 10 tooth gear but I found a couple of Scalectrix gears online, one with 8 teeth and one with 9. The 8 tooth gear is too small but the 9 tooth gear fits really well and I'm going from 10 teeth to 9 teeth which reduces the wheel speed by 10% so that's a good start. However it was still running fast so I thought I'd try dropping the voltage to the motor using electronics and that's the reason for these resistors. I actually brought these voltage dropper diodes from Strathpepper Junction which knock about 3 volts off the decoder output, however they didn't quite work. For some reason these diodes don't seem to work well with the back EMF features on the decoder and we need back EMF to work because that's how the decoder works out how fast to play the chuffing sound. So I decided to try using resistors instead. Now using resistors to reduce voltage to the motor isn't ideal, they can get really hot because they're just there dissipating energy. After much experimenting I came up with this not very elegant solution. It's 8 220 ohm resistors in parallel which effectively gives a 27.5 ohm resistance. Why 8 of them? Why not a single resistor of a similar value? Well it comes down to the power they can handle. The resistors potentially need to get rid of 1 watt of power which is quite a bit and a single resistor would probably get very hot. But because we've got 8 of them, each rated up to half a watt, they can share the load and having tested this they get slightly warm to touch but I'm not concerned that they're going to melt anything. I'm still experimenting with resistor values but at the moment I'm happy and I've got the speed down to something more realistic. However, the resistors drop the voltage so much that just to get started we need about 30% on the throttle. Below that the motor stalls. So how can we fix this? Well the Hornby decoder may not have speed control but it does have back EMF settings and I've used these to help smooth things out. Back EMF is a function on the decoder where it senses how fast the motor is moving against a predefined expectation. If it thinks the motor is going too slow it will try to speed it up. Equally if it thinks it's going too fast it will try to slow it down. 
This is useful, for example, when a locomotive is going up a gradient and the decoder will provide extra power to make sure that it doesn't slow down. But I'm using this feature to make sure the motor gets turning when the throttle is below 30%. Here we've got the back EMF settings within JMRI for this decoder and we've got a choice of two algorithms. I'm using motor algorithm 1 which I believe is a curved profile starting slow and then rapidly speeding up. This offers the best slow speed control whereas algorithm 2 is a linear profile. Then we've got these PNI values for each of the two algorithms and each one takes a value between 0 and 255. I won't claim to fully understand how they work but they're both variables in the decoder's built in closed PI controller. P is the proportional element and I is the integral element. Search for PI controllers on YouTube for some videos explaining how it all works. You'll need to play around with these variables since every locomotive and motor is different, but a lower I value and a middling P value seem to work for me. This is the back EMF cutoff and it takes a value between 1 and 128 because there are 128 speed steps on the controller. For speed steps below this value the back EMF will be active, for speed steps above this value the back EMF will be inactive. Again this will vary for each locomotive but I've set this at speed step 96 which is 75% on the throttle. For this locomotive, if back EMF is active above speed step 96, it gets really carried away and gives the motor far too much power. I don't plan to go over 75% for this locomotive because it's just far too fast, but this is just a bit of a safety feature having it cut out at speed step 96. So let's get the body back on and give it a run. So there we go, a digital sound fitted motor upgraded model on a budget. It's never going to be perfect because the Hornby TTS sound decoder doesn't have that speed adjustment functionality, but I'm pretty happy with it as it's running at the moment. In future, I might play around with the value of the resistors or change some of the back EMF settings. I'll try to put links to the bits I've used in the description below. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notifications button so YouTube will let you know when videos come out in the future. I'll leave you with some shots of Robert the Devil running around Little Wicket. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.